सो गुड मॉर्निंग गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन फ्रेंड्स टू ज्वाइन माई लाइव ऑनलाइन क्लासेस जस्ट गो टू गूगल एंड टाइप अभिषेक रोशन सो वंस यू टाइप दिस वन यू कैन सी द टॉप मोस्ट वेबसाइट हियर दैट एस टी टी पी एस कॉलन स्लैश स्लैश डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू डॉट अभिषेक रोशन डॉट कॉम दिस इज माई लेजिटिमेट एंड ऑथेंटिक वेबसाइट यू कैन जस्ट क्लिक ऑन दिस वन and uh, even you can download the android app also for your mobile devices so here you just need to go to the courses and here you will find out all my live upcoming classes and ongoing classes my friends so as of now the ongoing classes are batch 2 and batch 3 is ongoing so once these two batches will be finished so uh, the upcoming classes uh, that is 30 days of aws it corporate boot camp is also available you can join this batch and even if you want to join uh, 100 plus days of it corporate boot camp that is batch 4 right so you can jo join now only uh, the batch is going to start from july okay and if you only wants to go for a aws corporate boot camp then you can join this 30 days of aws it corporate boot camp guys so uh, till now what all things we have covered guys uh, in linux uh, we have covered till uh, managing sl linux and all right and uh, today we are going to see this uh, booting procedure and kernel parameter basically okay and uh, today also we are going to finish this linux job automation right so yes we are uh, 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 just two topics behind of software package management okay but at the same time i need to make sure you guys should be able to grasp the thing it's not only just to finish the things right because few of you have requested me to finish things faster right so i'm not going as i told you the same thing i have mentioned in the terms and condition also i'll go according to my speed and all okay because i believe if you are not understanding there is no point of doing that one right it's not at all about finishing something it's all about what you know with 100% conviction correct fine uh, guys how many of you know about the booting procedures or the booting process i'll compare the uh, actually made the thing what i used to explain earlier uh, that is as per rhel 7 so you are going to get that one but from uh especially as i am updated so many things uh, in my slides and all so it's going to be from rhel 9 okay so anything is fine for me because as i told you that if something is there new so it's coming from uh, the background only right? from the previous technology or from the previous topic only right from the rhel 7 rhel 9 came correct so any idea about uh, what do you mean by booting process or the booting procedure what exactly a booting procedure this is a interview question do you know the booting process of a linux operating system fine uh, let me explain what i used to explain earlier guys okay so if you uh, wanted to know what a booting process this is the typical diagram uh, which i used to follow earlier okay uh, this is the edit one okay so basically you can see it starts with bios basic input output stream guys and uh, whenever you turn on your machine okay normally i'm just talking about whenever you turn on your machine okay so the execution will go to the bios basic input output system and the mbr is going to sorry and the bios is going to execute the mbr right so bios is nothing but bios is a standard uh, input output system uh, which main job is to search for the bootloader and all right and uh, bootloader is nothing but that is master boot recorder that is what called mbr and all right so its simple job is to just load the boot and execute the mbr right mbr is what mbr is nothing but it's a master boot recorder will be there and this master boot recorder has basically uh, located in the first sector of your bootable disk bootable disk could be anything uh it could be your uh, hard disk will be there it could be your cd uh, floppy disk will be there it could be your uh, i would say uh your ssd will be there right your secondary disk will be there so in that sector basically you are going to get this mbr and all right and uh, this mbr is of 512 bytes and all sometimes they are going to ask you uh what how how many bytes this mbr is going to consist of okay so this is of 2 uh, uh, 512 bytes and all right and its main job is to execute the grub 
okay and then final that is nothing but that is grand unified bootloader and uh, which executes the kernel right and kernel job is to mount the root file system and all correct means your kernel is also having the image of your grub okay which i have explained long back ago to you guys right so your kernel is only going to have the image uh, of your grub so kernel fine so kernel main job is as i said kernel main job is consisting of your grub okay uh, that i have told you the boot files and all which i have already explained long back ago right so this kernel is having that image of your grub which is your kernel image you can say or also at the time when the system is booting up you see a splash screen where it is showing 9 dot something or uh, the uh, kernel image and its version and all right so it's going to load that one and uh, finally it will go to the init process init is the first process which is going to run for your system right and then finally run level there are total you can say six run levels will be there so this is the old process basically this is most of the things are same and all but just for you i have given a glimpse what i used to taught earlier in this one i used to explain so much in detail and all but now no not required okay because as i said this is there you if you are going to explain like this they are not going to accept this one because this is as per rhel 7 this is as per rhel 6 this is as per the previous version of rhel okay but what is the latest thing going on and that you need to explain with things are almost same only they are also bios mbr grub and kernel in it and instead of run level they are having target and all okay so the new diagram is looks like this understanding my point Okay, this is the system. This is his, it's look like the new Linux booting process and all. So let's understand each and everything one by one, whatever I have explained just now. In this one, most of the things are theoretical. The one question only they are going to ask you, do you know booting process of a Linux operating system? So you have to explain in a very simplified manner. Okay, so how you are going to explain things in a simplified manner as soon as you turn on your machine. That's what I have written here. As soon as, soon as I, you have power on your machine, as soon as you... Fine. So as soon as you power on your machine, what will happen first? What will be the next sequence which is going to be happen? You, you'll, you need to know this one. Okay. So whenever you turn on your machine, as you know that just now I have explained you that it will go to MBR. Same way here also, it will go to your BIOS. That is basically basic input output system. But in RHEL9, we are also calling it as a UEFI. Okay. Somebody has told me, sir, whatever you have taught in that is got changed. So boss, things will change, but the only the naming convention will change. So did they remove BIOS? No, right? I'm not telling you guys means I have, I've got so many comments that sir, you have taught in that one, that process has been, no, the process is not changed. Only the naming convention. You only tell me in AWS, we are calling the virtual machine as a AMI. Yes or no? Correct. In Azure, we are calling it as a virtual machine. Now you are uh, in same thing in uh, GCP, you are calling it as a virtual machine. Okay. And in again, in virtualization, you are calling it as a virtual machine. So does all three, all four things are different? Tell me guys. No, right? No or yes? No, right? Obviously, no. Because things will be same only. We can change the name. And that is what done over here. Earlier, it was calling it as a BIOS. We are calling it as a BIOS. Imm immediately, when you turn on your machine, the execution will go to the BIOS. That is basic input output system. Or we are also calling it as a in RHEL 9. That is unified extensible firmware interface. Okay, and its main job is to initialize the hardware. Okay, what all hardware it's going to initialize, right? To perform the power on self test and all, right? 
so basically if you understand from this diagram so this is the part where you are as soon as you turn on your machine the bios or the basic input output system loads the mbr that's what in the previous okay but in this one what it is telling load from a non volatile memory what is a non volatile memory and what is a volatile memory who is going to tell me ram uh maybe the disk one uh, is uh, volatile and non volatile means what's well correct very good so only they have increased the step means in this step it's going to detect basically from a non volatile memory where is your mbr is kept just now i have told you guys that your mbr is kept basically it's a it's uh, it's a 512 byte yes or no i told you right and it's kept in your bootable disk bootable disk could be your ssd bootable disk could be your floppy disk bootable disk could be your cd rom and all right so from there it's going to try to detect that one correct understanding my point guys so from there from the non volatile not from the ram okay from the non volatile memory so first it's going to detect which is de which device is there where is your mbr is there so it is going to detect the device the second step it is going to detect the device by using your cpu and all and choose a boot device that boot device is nothing but that could be your floppy disk that could be your cd rom and that could be your ssd your secondary disk correct slash dev slash hda slash dev slash sda like these are your disk only understanding my point and there it is going to find out what there it is going to find out the mbr which i have they in the previous version it was directly jumping into this part if you remember you see this diagram they are directly from uh, as soon as you turn on they are directly jumping into mbr and mbr is here here it's a, sorry uh, from bios it's jumping into mbr right and in mbr is nothing but this is a master boot recorder which is going to execute your grub but we have to find the mbr first where is your mbr so your mbr is nothing but your mbr is going to be inside this floppy disk or cd rom or in your secondary disk secondary disk means your like if you take it in our case so it should be slash dev slash sda if you come over here if i come let's come here right so if i do df hyphen h df hyphen h right so where it is boot where it is in slash df slash sda correct yes or no guys so in this sector only your mbr is there if boot file wherever your boot file will be there there only that mbr will be there master boot recorder right and this master boot recorder is nothing guys this master boot recorder is of 512 bytes okay in size and it has three components remember this is also interview question these three components are nothing but one is your primary boot loader okay second one is your uh, which is of basically you can uh, you can call it as a 446 bytes okay second one is your partition table information which is of 64 byte and third one is your mbr validation check which is of 2 bytes and all and that is going to store in our case it's in this choose a boot device and all okay correct that is the third step right so in this case in the old case this mbr is having all that record that mbr is having all that record okay now the mbr is going to execute your grub so what is grub so grub is grand unified boot loader grub is nothing but it's a grand unified boot loader now in our case in rhcl9 because we have to go via rhcl9 so basically this boot loader is having what information this boot loader is going to read in rhcl9 what we are doing is that is read slash etc grub2.conf okay let's check it is there or not slash etc grub2.conf see it is in the form of script only yes or no guys it is in the form of script only so it is going to read from here it is going to read from here right the mbr is going to read it from the grub file that is this is the main file remember you cannot delete this file if you are going to delete this file your system is not going to boot up understanding my point yes or no okay 
so is going and it's going to execute and load the kernel supported libraries means what it is going to execute the grub right so what is grub doing over here so grub is nothing but guys that is grand unified boot loader okay so uh, once the mbr has the information of your grub2.cfg so as soon as the now the next execution will go to grub next execution will be go to grub and grub has the information of your kernel grub has the information of your kernel and that is what the or the image also you can say it okay and that is what i have mentioned over here the second part is done in this case okay the third part is that in this is also done the boot and all this is also done okay now the grand unified bootloader directly i am jumping into this part okay because this is more important so your grub is grand unified bootloader is loaded loaded from the which lo, which location slash boot slash grub to grub dot cfg it is going to this is the main file guys this is the main file and the one which i have shown you just now if i which file i have shown you just now this one who is going to tell me which is this file there are two files right i have this also i have explained long back ago who is going to tell me what is the difference between these two file <clears throat> are one is soft link one is hard link see here okay this is the main file this is the actual file this is also interview question this is why i am telling you guys okay and if you do ll slash etc grab see what is it is written here it is a link file right and it is pointing to the which file to the main file that's what i have explained this also i have explained you guys long back ago understanding sir and this also you can give an example or in the interview that what is a soft link what is a hard link so slash boot grab to grub2.conf is the main file which is having the uh, which is having your image uh, name basically the image is going to be there only the what image the kernel which is loading at the time of booting you see there is something called okay fine you this is also okay i need to restart the system then only you will understand how many times i have done it okay uh, i am not restarting this one okay how many it still okay leave this one uh, this is already running right and uh, this is the one okay let me restart this one guys okay basically your grub is grand unified bootloader is having your kernel image right so see now it's entering its boot menu it's it's going into boot f2 also you need to press sometime alex and all see this one i am talking about this is what this is your kernel image basically you are see different one and all it's it's came and it's gone yes or no it's came and it's gone where is that information is there that also we are calling it as a splash screen we also call that one as a splash screen okay so that image whenever you see that is basically coming from your grub2.com file and basically it is having the kernel image that is what call your kernel okay fine till then just take care of yourself your loved one bye bye and jai hind